Now, instead of mating two shafts together using physical clutches, with a fluid coupler, you don't actually have to worry about replacing these parts periodically, as long as it's well maintained. For example, in the automotive application, a fluid coupler can last as long as the vehicle itself, with some exceptions of course. Ford. Now fascinated by this technology, I wanted to see if I could create my own fluid coupler out of mostly 3D printed parts, so this is what I came up with. Now the first thing that you might be wondering is, well, how does a fluid coupler actually work? Well, firstly, it uses fluid instead of clutches, no surprise. But how is that fluid able to transmit so much torque to the other side? Using my model as a demonstration piece, you can see that the outer housing and the inner part, called the pump, spin independently of one another. Now if I fill it with some simulation fluid, in this case some steel BBs, you can get an idea of what the oil is going to do. Now when I start spinning it around, you can see that they not only move to the outer edge, but they also move upwards because of the curvature of the pump. Now when you watch me install the centerpiece that's called the core, you can see that as it spins around, it moves out from the center and that it wants to move up in between the core and the outer edge. Now this is useful because if I install another piece on the other side that mates to the back housing, now because of the core is in the way, once it reaches the outer edge of the impeller, it'll actually come up and around and then back down through the middle, and then it will make its way back down into the pump again, and then repeat the cycle. Now this fluid circulation is actually what's responsible for transmitting torque across the pump into the impeller, and then through to the other side. You might sort of picture it like throwing a ball against a wall. The energy invested in the ball hits the wall, the energy goes into the wall, and then it returns back to the sender. Now that that's out of the way, I'm going to get to work to putting the fluid coupler together. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to JB weld the core into the pump, and then into the impeller. Also, I apologize, I'm just getting over a cold, so you might notice my voice is a little bit nasally throughout the video. And here's what the two parts look like when they're fully assembled. Now, it was around this stage when I got to a bit of an issue. How am I going to stop the oil from leaking out around the shaft? So what I had done is I came up with three different designs for a seal. The first one was too big and didn't really do much sealing at all. The second one didn't really sit right. But the third one was perfect. Now I was happiest with the third design, so this is the one that I chose and decided to go with. It seemed the most promising. Now as I'm putting this in, you might notice that it's a little charred on the end, and that's actually because I melted it to mate to the shaft a little bit better to get us a better seal. Now I've put o-rings in between the screws and the surface, and this is so when I screw it down, it'll prevent any oil from leaking around the screw and out the bolt holes. I'm not sure if you've noticed it yet, but I noticed something was wrong at this stage. I don't actually have a way to put any fluid into it. To fix this problem, I made a new impeller with a hole already in it. Then I tapped the hole for a screw, and put a gasket behind it, and this is going to serve as our fill hole. Now to mate the parts together, I'm going to use JB Weld as it's very strong. But to prevent any oil from leaking around the housing and the impeller, I'm going to use some silicone to glue the parts together. This means that I can take it apart in the future if I really wanted to. It's been about a day or so, so everything is all nice and dry, so I think we can actually go out and give it our first try. Like all my other projects, I'm going to screw this one into the test block.
Now, when I was testing it with the corded drill that I usually use, it wasn't really all that impressive. There wasn't a whole lot of torque making its way to the other side. Now, it's had me thinking that it wasn't spinning fast enough, because it does need to spin to a certain speed in order to stall. Stalling meaning that it's locked up one to one. And to fix this problem, I'm going to try this other power drill, and it spins a lot faster. Ow! God, she burns. Now, in fact, this new drill worked so well that the other side was able to lock up enough that it rounded off the end. Now my solution was to actually make these flexible TPU couplings. Now not only is the TPU going to absorb all of the vibrations, it's also going to prevent any damage to the shaft. If anything were to happen, it would actually start to round out the inner part of this. And it wouldn't damage it because it's flexible, but it would also protect the outer shafts of the fluid coupler. Now it's clear that a lot of torque is getting to the other side, but I wanted to find out just how much torque there was. Now, in order to do that, I used an armature and a water bottle. By using an armature and the water bottle, I could find the required force needed to put the fluid coupler into what's called mechanical equilibrium. Now, how do you know if it's in mechanical equilibrium? It's either going to be not moving at all, or it'll continue to move at a constant speed. For example, a car cruising on the highway is actually in equilibrium. The force from the engine is equal to the forces pushing back on it from, I don't know, wind resistance or friction. Now when I push my two arms together, I'm pushing with the same amount of force, and therefore there's no movement, because if you add the forces up, they're equal to zero. In our case, you'll know that it's in equilibrium because the water bottle won't be moving. Now with that said, I think it's time we try and see if it works. Now to actually conduct the test, I'm just going to progressively add more and more water to see where its limit is. Wow. Now, I was actually pushing down on it with my arm to see how close it was to the equilibrium force, but to my surprise, I had to put quite a bit of force on that water bottle to keep it from spinning over, which it unfortunately slipped and snapped the arm. But a few days later, I came back out with a new, longer arm, and I'm going to try this again. Now this time, I'm actually just going to start with the water bottle completely full. That way we can see if it's too much for us, and then we can work our way backwards by removing some water. Huh. Wow. Okay. I am really curious to see how much torque it'll put through uh, just using like this drill, but it seems to just break every bit of t test equipment that I've tried thus far. But we can actually calculate how much torque that was so we know it at least makes that much. Well, if we multiply the mass of the bottle by 9.8, which is the acceleration of gravity, we can find the amount of force that's from the water bottle. Then, if we multiply that force by the length of the armature in meters, which is about 0.1, we get about half a newton meter of force from the water bottle. Now, I still would like to find out just how much torque I can get from this fluid coupler, but I think I'm just going to save that challenge for a later video, so until then, I'm just going to leave it on the block here, and then we'll get back to it later. Thanks for watching.